Society's Sympathy for White Killers, Characterization of Criminals in Columbine. My thesis states that in Columbine, the author, Dave Cullen, presents Eric and Dylan to be sympathized with by the reader for their mental health and environment to the point of discrediting their guilt in masterminding the murders of 13 innocent people. This treatment of mass murders vastly contrasts how the media would have portrayed two non-white shooters carrying out an identical crime. To clarify, the Columbine shooting was in fact carried out by two Caucasian males in which they killed 13 people and injured dozens more. The portrayal of Eric and Dylan, the shooters, in Columbine by Dave Cullen does not adequately characterize them as the violent criminals that they were. That imagery is carried on into public media and the public of America to view them as less guilty than they truly are, being that they are the sole perpetrators of this mass killing. Had either shooter not been a white male raised in a middle-class suburban family environment. The media would have been dedicated not to finding a deeper cause, but to showing the two killers no mercy and creating non-existent links between them and racial stereotypes. Columbine refers to an event on April 20th, 1999, in which Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold opened fire on their high school with the intent of carrying out a massacre of the entire student body. They killed as many people as possible, at the end totaling 13, and then themselves. Dave Cullen wrote a nonfiction narrative of the shooting, simply titled Columbine. The book provides an in-depth understanding of all people involved in the shooting, fam victims and shooters alike, as well as their families. From there, it continues to tell the investigation process following the shooting. Many of Cullen's own research, as well as the research he focused on in the writing of his book, is relating to psychopathy and mental illness, relating that as the main cause of the shooting, not the killers themselves, but their mental illness, which they were struggling with. Similar events include shootings at Virginia Tech, Sandy Hook Elementary, Umpqua Community College, and Charleston, South Carolina. Eric's characterization is evident in this excerpt from page 27 in which red text indicates the foreshadowing of mental illness, green text indicates the development of Eric's family life, and blue text indicates the development of his own personality as the charming high school student that many knew him to be prior to the attack. Both blue and green text is used to humanize Eric in portraying him as a confident, well-liked boy, excited for prom night, with two parents out celebrating their anniversary that night. This creates a typical, familiar American imagery of a boy just a boy in high school, living his life, very relatable to anyone observing this in the media. Underlined text is used to indicate uh, Dave Cullen's simplistic language, uh, sentences of several words or less, implying that these detail, the details provided in these sentences are obvious to the reader. They aren't out of character for the already built up imagery of a typical high school student. Now, the foreshadowing of his mental illness is used for an ironic effect in this passage. The fact that Eric was crazy for a prom night date and his all-time favorite movie was a graphic and violent gore fest. The irony being in that an actual psychopath was identified as crazy for exhibiting normal teenage behavior before his psychopathic tendencies were revealed to the greater public. Dylan's characterization is evident in this passage from page 16, where red text is tone words, blue text his plans for the future, and once again, underlined are examples of Dave Cullen's writing style in 
the fragmented, simple sentences of obvious details, and in fact, the phrasing of, of course he was heading for college. Heading for college among other plans for the future. He was an intelligent boy. He had applied to several schools and been accepted there. Headed for college to be a computer engineer. He picked out a dorm room. These plans were not up for debate. They weren't uncertain. He was planning for a future, despite also planning a massive attack on his high school. Tone words in this sentence, his bright future and his like for the desert. Again, humanizing this person, creating a relatable personality in an affectionate, optimistic, positive, light, to be associated with any relatable high school student. This chart compares the Columbine shooters to shooters of other mass shootings, specifically focusing on a description of the race and ethnicity of the shooters and their death toll. You can see that Columbine, Sandy Hook, and Charleston are the only ones carried out by Caucasian males, and they are the three that are most often attributed to mental illness being the cause, not the shooters themselves and their own hateful ideologies and prejudices and drive for violence and to create, cause harm. If one were to rewrite Columbine, the event, not the book, clear differences would be evident even with a change of just a simple detail. For instance, former President Clinton delivered a speech after the shooting directed, not, directed towards the victims and the community, not addressing the issue of the shooters and the cause of the event. He, he acknowledges how impressed he is, how the community has held on to their faith, refer referencing the scriptures and St. Paul, and how there will never be a satisfactory, simple explanation, but you still have faith. Now, had Eric and Dylan been two Muslim teenagers, the expected reaction would be a politician quick to associate to Muslim teenagers as adult men dehumanized as puppets in the larger scheme of radical Islamic terrorism targeting not just one high school but the but America the greater population the fundamentals it's President Clinton didn't try and associate a, an explanation for the shooting Yet, if they had been Muslim, the automatic default explanation is religious terrorism. In conclusion, there is a long history of U.S. prejudice and leniency towards white, white crime compared to tougher sentences and treatment of non-white criminals. This is evident not only through the text or through the media presentation of criminals, but through the war on drugs incarceration rates among minority ethnicities rather than Caucasian populations, and the association of crime with racial communities. This isn't a certain race's tendency to commit crime above the white population. It is simply the institutionalized prejudice and racism in the American justice system that has led to higher incarceration rates and worse treatment of ethnic minorities in America. To put the blame on mental illness rather than on the shooters themselves is to avoid addressing the perpetrators of a violent act, which is exactly what Dave Cullen does in Columbine. Yes, he addresses that Dylan and Eric did commit the, the crime, they did lead the attack, they were responsible for those 13 murders, but the very idea of the novel is to search for other factors, biological, physical, psychological, environmental, all to find
find a deeper cause, something other than just two hateful teenagers to blame the event for. This is a privilege often attributed to white criminals, but rarely anyone not white. This lessens their burden, this lessens the guilt that they are seen with, therefore allowing the media to provide a more innocent portrayal of white criminals.